Hey everybody, Gitan Onzi here and welcome back to another amazing, really cool, very really awesome, very helpful tutorial onto Flash. If you haven't watched the first episode, I suggest you go back and check that one out. I mean, it's pretty good. Honestly, it's like super good. And that was all about the tools and what they do. This time we're going to learn about keyframes, we're going to learn about frames per second and what layers do. First thing we're going to talk about is the keyframes. You see here these numbers over here. Every single one of those are frames. What's a frame? This little thing, when you see one, boom, that's a frame. Every square or every dot, it's a frame. If you see back in the days, back in the days, where people actually busted their backs and did paper, traditional paper animation, imagine every single one of these is a paper. So when you make an animation, you have your drawing, And then the next one, oh, I don't see my drawing. But for the sake of, for the sake of uh, time, uh, for the time, sake of time saving, sorry, I can't speak correctly. For the sake of time saving, I'm gonna do it like this. So that's another keyframe, that means another paper. I'm gonna erase this, remember what the letter for eraser was? That's right, it was the letter E. And we're gonna do this now. And then another paper. And I'm gonna erase this. And I'm gonna do this now. And then one more paper. And I'm gonna do this now. Like that. A oh, little bit like that. And then one more, just for good measure. And I'm gonna do this now. And if you put it, play it back, yay. Movement. The illusion of movement, which is just a bunch of pictures put together. Now that you see this, amazing animation. Five stars, Oscar winning kind of animation. That's what basically these are. Every single keyframe, every single dot you see here are a keyframe. Or imagine in traditional animation, a page. If you ever did a flip book with little sticky notes, you know the ones that are like super cool, super awesome? I used to fill those out all the time. Cool. So every single one of these, imagine it's a paper. And these look bigger because I make them bigger. Usually they look like that. That's the size that they look like. So that way, that's what you have. Now we're talking about keyframes. As you see, it doesn't look like the, the, the point where the arm is. If we get a little closer, if you see the arm is like all whack, like it goes up and down, like it doesn't stay in the same spot. Ah! Why? Because I didn't see where the arm was supposed to go. So what am I gonna do? This is what I'm gonna do. There's this little beautiful thing named the onion skin. Ah, the onion skin, this little thing of jig right here. This puppy does this. You're gonna see this little bracket, and what this does is it shows you the other pages. Imagine you're watching now some uh, tracing paper, and as you see, it's very faint, but it's there. So now I'm able to watch whatever I did before, and I can actually trace over it again. Like there's this entire thing and it is more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's more consistent. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. We can go back to the next one. Oh, see this one, It's you can't see nothing because it's outside the brackets. I could actually go and look at both of them at the same time. You can look at the entire animation if you want, but it gets confusing. So I'm just gonna go stick to this and I'll do one more. Oh, that's gross. Let's do that one more. Yep. 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 And. Yep. Yep. So now. Eh, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. And I'm gonna put a next keyframe. Oh, by the way, keyframes are two different kinds of keyframe. Keyframe uh, by the F6. Pressing the F6 on your keyboard is going to give you a new keyframe using whatever it's on the, the project, whatever is on the stage. This little square is the stage. Pressing F7, however, will give you a fresh, a fresh new keyframe, which means nothing is there. F7 gives you a blank page. F6 
gives you a page with whatever was there before. So F6 is usually pretty good whenever you want to make small adjustments, whenever you would just want to change. For example, whatever we did, uh, what we did before about the stick figure. If you go in there and I just want to change that arm, that's all I really want to do is erase it. I'm gonna press selection and look, you see the onion skin? That's where it's showing where it used to be. So I can go back and do that small change and know exactly where it was before. Just a small little tabby tab change. Press F6 and it does the same thing, it's still there. I can go back and do the whatever changes I choose. Like, oh, 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 like that. And now we play it and now it's something that looks a little bit more, you know, just nicer. The other one looks a little bit too, too choppy, too weird. This one looks slightly nicer because, you know, we know where things are. F6 makes a uh, new paper, but with uh, whatever it's there before. F7 gives you a blank slate for you to do whatever, whatever you choose to do. After that, we're gonna go into frames per second. And this, my friends, is where we get the ball. How do I get a ball? Well, you see over here on the rectangle, we talked about the rectangle. Remember the rectangle? Yeah, the rectangle. Press R to get the rectangle. The thing is, you can use the rectangle or Usually, traditionally, when you're learning animation, they're gonna make you do a circle. How do you get a circle? Oh, well, you use the oval tool. Guess what letter you get the oval tool? Yes, with the letter O. Or you can actually press the rectangle and keep it pressed a little bit, and it's gonna give you all this little sub sub menu of stuff you can do. With the oval tool is the letter O, and you're gonna make a circle. Haha! -ha. If you want to make a perfect circle, you press the letter yeah the key shift and you make a beautiful perfect circle and if you want to go freeform and be like all super hardcore about it and you just want to do it by yourself then you can choose to do that if you just want to make sure that it's something specifically I can have it like this but if I press shift boom perfect circle no matter what shift makes a perfect circle now here is where we always get the traditional ball animation this is gonna be your first ever animation ever ever if you have never touched flash before so I'm gonna make a keyframe here and then we're gonna skip a couple of people are they gonna skip ahead a little bit uh, we're gonna delete all of this because we don't need it delete it and here I'm gonna right click and just clear keyframes because I don't want nothing so here we have our first keyframe we're gonna go over by um, 30 letter 30 press f6 for a brand new keyframe but with everything in there i don't want to press f7 because f7 deletes whatever i had and i'm actually going to move it over here what does that do well it changes that that keyframe it's there and when it gets to there boom it's on that side because it's a new page something different a new paper a new whatever so if you notice here on this little little number right here it says fps what does that mean it means frames per second meaning how fast this animation is gonna go how many frames are gonna go in one second 24 minutes that right there exactly one second is gonna go by from here to here ready one mississippi bam right there it was like right on point one more time one mississippi beautiful for every 24 frames it's gonna be a full second and there's a little indicator right there also of how much time has gone by so one exact second has been there because we're on frame 24. This here is going to show you what number you are because sometimes it's a little confusing, you know? You have no idea what, what is this, 61, 62? What is it? Oh, it's 62 actually. Cool. Now I know. And it shows you exactly how much time has gone since 0 to frame 62, which is 2.5 seconds at this time. So frames per second. What's, what's the deal? What's so cool about that? Well, I'll show you. I'm gonna do a little little skip ahead. I'm gonna just do a tween. And by doing that, you just click between the frames, right click it, and then there's gonna be a thing that's gonna say classic tween. And what's that gonna do is gonna make it go, wow! What's a classic tween? Pretty much is your tin flash. I want it to start here and I want it to go here. You fill in the middle and flash does that. However, there's more complicated things later, but whenever we get to actual tweening, we'll discuss it. Right now we're just talking about frames per second. What's the deal? Here, this is at 24 frames per second. It's pretty smooth. However, if you were to jaw, if you were to fall down to 12 frames per second, it would go just as fast, but it's just gonna be choppy. The way that I do that, 
or way there actually the the best way to illustrate that is by something I already done which is PV uh, most of you have already seen my series stickman can fight PV moves very choppy because he's animated at 12 frames per second if I were to let me see I'm gonna make another circle this one's gonna be green or lime I don't know why it picks lime so much like that and if I were to do 12 frames per second meaning that only 12 frames are gonna go in one exact second how would I go about that? Well, I can actually change this and just show you. Haha, -ha, it's gonna be better. So this is now a 12 frames per second. Notice how slower and choppier it is because for every 12 frames, it's one second. I can even drop it down to what? What do you like? Six frames per second. That's gonna look incredibly choppy. Uh, 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 oh, I'm lagging, Lag the lag is real. Or if you want to be like super hardcore, hit us up with that 60 frames per second. It's going to be like the smoothest animation. Wow. So pretty, so beautiful. But honestly, you want to stick to 24. It's just kind of like the industry standard. 24 is pretty good. Cool. And the last thing that we're going to talk about today is going to be the layers. Layers. What are the layers? Are these little things? These guys, well, if you notice these X's are because... I don't want to show you what they are because it's a little surprise for later. Um, but these guys are layers. And what are layers? It's just like if you're grabbing two pieces of paper and you stack them up against each other. I'm going to do this, the little, little circular circle thing. And on this one, I'm going to do a green circular circle thing. If I were to select them and put them side by side, no problem. But if you notice this one, the one that is selected, is on layer 9. This one, the one that is now selected, is on layer 8. If I were to put them one, like that, oh, this one is on top than this one because this one's on a higher level. Because this one is on a higher layer. You see, imagine this is a tower starting from the back row, right there. That one, whatever you put on top, that's the order that they're going to be showing up. I can be putting something over here as well. Gonna be putting, uh, let's change the color to black. Gonna be grabbing stick figure black, put it right there. Oh, it's hidden. Why? Because this one, this is on a higher layer. If I were to grab this and then stick it up higher, oh, now he's on a higher layer than this one. That's just the way things are. And you gotta keep in track, you gotta keep track as to where your layers are and your animation because things can get confusing rather quickly if you don't know where your layer is sometimes you're like i thought i colored it in why is it not working maybe because your layer is uh either on top or on the bottom of whatever you're trying to do so you're very very supposed to be very careful with where your layers are as to different kinds of layers you have your standard layer which is just like this looks like a little folded paper you have your guide layers what are those it's just layers that will not show if i were to press Control enter it's just gonna show us the entire the entire clip but uh, when you're doing this when you have a, a layer that is a guide it's gonna show you like the little t t ruler and they will not show up in your animation whatever you're doing at the end they will not show up there's actual guides meaning that you can like put arrows you can put little colors you can put signals you can actually put text in them just so you know what's gonna happen and in the actual animation they will not show up those are pretty cool the other thing that you have are masks and the masks are a little tricky because the way that they work is that they uh, how can I explain this in the simplest way uh, I'll add a new layer click 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 this button right here that says new layer and I'm gonna put it under that mask and it's gonna change color meaning that this mask is gonna affect this now if I were to go over here and I'm gonna draw just another blob of whatever and like a very sketchy weird somewhat of a stick figure and on the top one I draw with whatever color I want doesn't really matter I draw let's say oh, I only want this I only want this and I only want this much whatever brush whatever the brush color is in is what it's gonna show up and whatever you get to, how will you check it out how you see it is by actually pressing the lock ones see oh i only see whatever i colored in 
That's the way the masks work. Sometimes you use them to hide things, sometimes you only use them to expose things there, you know, they're masks. So by pressing the lock over here, you see the locks? Locks are made so you can't do any changes. If I press the selection tool with letter V, I can't select it, it's locked. I can't do nothing. Uh, if I grab the eraser, I can't erase it because it's locked. I cannot do anything unless I unlock it. Over here you see this little eye. The X's mean that you, I cannot see it. It doesn't mean that it's not there. It just means that I can't see it for the time being unless I unmask it or I unhide it. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, sure, whatever. So if I don't have the locks on, if I can see them, I can mess with them. Yay! Just like that. And those were the layers. I know that it was very extensive, very in-depth thing just for layers, but now that we know this and that we know our tools, we should be able to start working on the actual animation. Thank you so much for checking this out and I'll check you guys later. Thanks. See ya. Adios.